currently resident economic political advisor at uh, Ministry of Finance in Timor. So, hello. Over to you. Okay, thanks so much. Uh, I'm going to talk about economy of Timor Leste and now I will touch upon a little bit on the strategic development plan of Timor Leste and the recent economic development and what are the <coughs> key challenges and way forward. So um, in 2011, the government launched uh, its strategic development plan for the next 20 years. So the vision is that by 2013, uh, Timor Leste would like to graduate from LDC to be an upper middle income country. And uh, you can see, you know, I divided uh, the strategic development plan implementation in three different stages. So in the first and, and in, the, in the short and medium term development plan, now the government would like to focus on the human resource, or human capital development and infrastructure development. And at the last decade of the, of the SDP implementation, will focus on the diversification of the economy uh, and eradicate uh, extreme poverty. So to, to achieve the uh, uh, SDP objective or a strategic development objective, uh, uh, we have identified that you know, we, need to, we need to develop our potential and endowment sectors, which is agriculture, tourism, and petroleum industry. So far we have developed our tourism industry but only upstream, so the tourism, in the, oh, sorry, the petroleum industry, but only upstream. So the petroleum industry that we would like to develop is also downstream. And tourism, as, as uh, similar to uh, other Pacific states, you know, we also have some potential uh, tourism uh, 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 destination area, so we would, like to, we would like to develop tourism as well. And for agriculture, you know, uh, this is a potential sector because most people rely on this sector. But we realize that, you know, to, to diversify the economy by developing three, uh, these three potential sectors, uh, we can do that without having a proper, appropriate, and uh, adequate infrastructure and human capital. So that is why the focus, as I said uh, in, in the previous slide, that the focus right now is on the human capital and infrastructure development. They are key sectors that we, uh, we need to develop in order to diversify our, our economy. And these are some major uh, economic policies that are being taken by the government through its fiscal policy. Uh, as mentioned by Christopher, that you know, we use dollars, so we don't really have a, a monetary policy. So we use our fiscal policy to, to, to solve or to, to solve most, uh, some of our economic challenges. And uh, the first uh, major economic policy that I would like to share with you is uh, front-loading policy. So, so uh, in our fiscal framework, you know, uh, most, uh, most of our revenue is currently coming from uh, oil revenue. And the oil, uh, the revenue from the oil goes directly to our sovereign wealth fund, which is we call petroleum fund. And every year, the government, by law, the government is only allowed to take 3% of, of the petroleum wealth for its uh, 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 state budget. Uh, but this front-loading policy uh, explained that because we have infrastructure problem, we have human development or human capital, level, or human capital problem, that is why the government justified to the parliament that, okay, instead of just taking 3% from, we draw 3% from our petroleum, okay, let's do a front-loading policy by taking more than 3%, uh, investing in uh, infrastructure, investing in, in human capital, and then after that, we go back to 3%. The idea of 3% is, if you only take 3%, we call the 3% is estimated sustainable income. If you only 3% from your petroleum fund, then your fund will not be depleted. So you have money to spend uh, 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 now and also in the future. Uh, another another uh, uh, major economic policy that, that uh, we have been uh, taking is uh, transparency in our, in our petroleum fund management and also public financial management. Uh, uh, if, you, if you read some international reports, you know, our petroleum fund management is highly rated uh, we, I think we are one of, uh, I think we are the first one in, in, in you know, according to e, uh, e, 
EITA, now we are the first one in Asia in terms of the petroleum fund management and also the third in the world. Uh, and also, uh, through, our, through our fiscal policy, we do provide some stimulus for the, for the uh, small and medium, price, uh, medium enterprise development via uh, what we call uh, village and district development fund. And also, there are some other uh, major economic policies there. Okay. Uh, this, this slide uh, uh, shows us, you know, the, this one shows uh, our, our projection for our petroleum revenue uh, in the next uh, decade. So, our, uh, with the current uh, oil field that we have, if we only get, you uh, know, by not considering, let's say, greater sunrise and, and, and other oil field, then our petroleum revenue will, will down, or, you know, will, will be finished in uh, 20, uh, 25th. <coughs> So, uh, uh, so that is why we do have this uh, fiscal rule called ESI, which is we only take two percent, so that we have money spent now and in the future. But also in the other side, you know, we saw our domestic revenue also increasing, although it is uh, very small. Um, and that that graph shows uh, how much our petroleum fund now, and how much we spend for our state budget uh, in 2013. So basically we have this, this amount of money in our petroleum fund, but we only spend this one. Uh, it is because of, it is because of, uh, we understand that we have a poverty, we have unemployment, and et cetera, and et cetera, but we consider the, uh, the capacity of uh, our institution to spend money, uh, fiscal sustainability, quality of expenditure, and et cetera, and et cetera, that's why you know, we try to use our money wisely. And, and the, other, the other graph shows the domestic revenue and the expenditure and the gap between domestic revenue, or oh, domestic <coughs> revenue and the expenditure is financed by petroleum revenue. And because, uh, because of we are heavily relying on the petroleum revenue based on the uh, uh, World Bank, uh, World Bank uh, Calculation: uh, Timor Leste is the second, I think, the second most oil dependency country in the world <coughs> after South Sudan. Uh, and these are the front loading policies that I just explained. Now, the is that the red? The pink is uh, is the ESI, the three percent of uh, the three percent that we take from the petroleum and. And, and the rest are domestic revenue. And you see, in, in starting from 2009, we already take, uh, we, 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 we apply the front loading policy. So we, we, we draw more than 3% from our petroleum revenue to finance our uh, state budget. Um, uh, another thing that I would like to say here is that our growth so far is mainly, you know, as uh, Christopher already said with us, that uh, you know, Timor Leste is not experiencing high growth rate, double digit. But the double digit growth rate is mainly driven by our public sector. You know, this is one of the this is one of the indicator. You know, the investment investment in Timor Leste is mainly driven by the private sector. But I think it it probably makes sense because we are in the initial stage of the of the development, and the government needs to put, uh, 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 you know, create facilities to, 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 to attract private sector investment. And this graph shows Timor Leste, you know, the red, the red, the red is about uh, government is investment in gross fixed capital formation we compared to other countries. And this one, you know, compared to other countries, you know, uh, the uh, investment from the public sector is very high. And, and, and because of the, because of the uh, uh, sectors that get high investment or sectors that get high investment from the public sector, the, the growth is very, very, uh, uh, the growth rate is, is increasing. And as you say, you know, because we put a lot of money in, in infrastructure, the growth rate of infrastructure is, uh, is higher, than, or higher compared to the others. And this, this one is the contribution of the contribution of, of sectors to our GDP. As you can see, agriculture, uh, agriculture and public, public administration, you know, they contribute uh, a lot to, to our GDP. 
and uh, there are a lot of discussions uh, in our society that you know having this type of economy may not be sustainable so we need to think about how can we uh, you know we attract private sector investment so that you know private sector take lead of the economy instead of public sector just one minute. Okay. Well, this, uh, these are the figures uh, of our economic uh, growth GDP or GDP growth, uh, GDP per capita that I would like to share with you. In, in counting our GDP, you know, we try to uh, uh, put, you know, we try to have GDP non oil and GDP oil because of our oil revenue only affect to our economy once we get, we withdraw money from the petroleum fund and put in our state budget. So that is why we try to uh, calculate, uh, uh, differentiate them in order to, to have uh, uh, figures that really reflect to the economic development in our country. And now this is the comparison of, of our GDP with other countries. And these are the inflations. So inflation uh, is high, uh, we know that, and, and uh, there are external and internal factors. External factor is beyond our capacity. In we try to fix it, and one of it is a uh, uh, supply bottleneck. Um, so we are we are planning to have uh, to fix our roads, rehabilitate our roads, and and and, and having a new sepo. Uh, uh, but doing business uh, uh, from Volver in our source, the Timor Leste is, is very very bad in doing business, and we understand that we try to fix it. Uh, <laughs> Okay, the key challenges, I think I have a lot of uh, slides here, but the key challenges that we, I, would like to, I would like to say here, since I only have one minute, is that you know, the growth is high, but seems to us like it is more uh, a, a, a quantitative growth rather than qualitative growth. Uh, so what, what we are trying to do is try to, do, try to have a, maintain the momentum of high growth rate, but uh, make sure that it is inclusive growth. Instead of rather or instead of just uh, uh, growth, and the second thing is, you know, the private sector involvement in our economy is still very low. Most of the local domestic private sector they just rely on government projects. So we will, like, you know, what we are, you know, the way forward is that, you know, we try to fix our business environment in order to to, to allow private sector to to to, to do investment and. And I think one of the policies that we just have in a few weeks, a uh, few weeks ago, is establishing a one-stop shop. Uh, 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 and and uh, we do also have a social uh, uh, safety net. We have a social assistance program, and we would like to keep this one. And uh, now we continue to evaluate this one and try to try to control it and more on uh, target to pro rather than just providing social assistance programs. Uh, and uh, another thing is, you know, we try to uh, curtail inflation and, and make it, uh, 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 bring it down so the private sector, so the cost of the, cost of the business in Timor-Leste uh, 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 can be uh, down and attract private, uh, private sector. I think I stopped here because I, that's all the time.